Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, some controls for the cab of our Toy Loco and we're going to animate them. Um, first let's have a look at a couple of points. Someone asked me well where do you get plans from uh, for the Locos and how to get the measurements. Now if we go uh, to uh, the web do searches and uh, there's lots of plans out there that you can use if you can't use a plan uh, try and get a photograph uh, you can use that now it's a little bit different when it comes to the cab controls and what makes up the cab um, very rarely would you ever find plans for like a throttle or anything like that for those you have to go get photos have a look at sites that uh, uh, specialize in um, the types of uh, loco that you're looking at um, and as far as dimensions go you have to use the visual clues of the photograph to give you an idea of the size remembering the ergonomics of uh, the operation if you like you know uh, that the desk you're sitting at is probably between 28 30 inches that's because that's the sort of average reach uh, of uh, of a man if you like the driver um, the controls are going to fit into the palm of the hand so uh, where you've got where you've got a round uh, sort of knob on the end of uh, a control arm it's going to fit in the ball of your hand so measure what that is you'll find that's probably about two and a half inches so you know the diameter of that is going to be two and a half inches take the visual clues like telephones you know uh, how big a telephone handset an old style handset how big it's going to be around there get your tape measure and then measure uh, how, what that distance is the the dials and that you can work those out as well um, if you you the depth of uh, part of the desk or whatever you can see uh, there's areas where you might have uh, dead man's um, uh, sort of uh, foot switch uh, there you know that it's going to be uh, the size uh, to accommodate uh, a man's uh, foot uh, so you can work out what the size is so that's uh, how you, you you go about uh, sort of getting those sizes when you don't know them uh, you're not necessarily going to be exact but uh, uh, hopefully you'll get somewhere near it by looking and comparing uh, you, you know your uh, mesh and that with what you see on the photograph um, so let's go back to blender now uh, when you when you've got a plan when you've got a plan or a photo you need to then uh, sort of get everything to scale now uh, it's very easy 2.8 uh, is uh, you you can map to a plane a reference image and uh, that uh, in 2.79 you go to a background image uh, you can get images of planes that's a way of doing it but uh, generally you would import a background image and your uh, plan would be on that so I've just got to make myself disappear and come down here and it says background image so we select background image uh, we're going to go uh, right because we model on the y-axis so we're going to go right view there open let's find uh, I've got one here there we go um, open the image you're not going to see it because we're not on the right uh, the right uh, camera so let's go free right that's perspective we want to be in the ortho mode there we go there is our plan now we uh, if we go in and uh, I turn that cube off you can see that the plan says that from buffer to buffer uh, the distance is 19.975 meters so uh, simple way is we just create a cube uh, in the y direction we make it 19.975 okay now what we do 
there's there's 19.975 so what we do is we come down here to our our background image and let's just scale it till it fits uh, correctly we need to move it uh, and uh, there we go and we just scale it up till we get it correct and uh, let's just move this like that so I can see where the edge of the buffers are and let's scale it a bit more and we're round about there so now I know that drawing uh, that plan is to scale with uh, what's in blender so now any of the rest of these uh, parts of the uh, plan I can take from uh, real life so to speak because uh, that will is going to be a correct uh, size it's going to be to scale so that's how we would go about actually um, sort of modeling from that background plan uh, and it's as simple as that so that's that part out of the way let's have a look about starting to model uh, our controls so here we are new project and let's start to model now let's set it up first off let's put environment lighting on so I can see and I'm going to set these uh, presets to uh, metric, to meters and to metric. Now, um, I was brought up on metric and imperial, but I'm better at judging distances and sizes in that in uh, imperial than I am in metric. I can judge what a foot is. I can judge what a yard is. Uh, I can't judge what 11 centimeters looks like. So... I'm going to work in uh, inches and feet and whatever, uh, but um, I can input that. It will convert it to uh, meters, centimeters, whatever. So here we go. I reckon this thing, but by a guesstimation, uh, I look at uh, the ruler, uh, look at what six inches might be. Well, I think, well, by the time I got my hand on the on the Bakelite knob at the end of this controller, uh, six inches, and it's not going to really support my wrist and all that. So ergonomically, I don't think that would work. Uh, 12 inches would be too long it's it take up half the desk so that would be out so I reckon somewhere between those two figures would be the actual size of this controller and I'm gonna go uh, probably for eight inches make it smaller rather than the nine inches which would be really in the middle I'll go for eight inches that 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 when I measured that that seems about right and um, the thing is I think a lot of the time you know have a ruler to hand or a measure i've got one in the drawer over there that i've got to put on my desk but have a measure to hand so that you can roughly work out what a size what sizes might be so you might look and say well look uh that speedo is going to be about that uh, about that diameter so then get the measure out and measure what that is probably about four or five inches um so uh you know you you have, have the ruler or, or tape measure handy uh so that you've got an idea of, of how uh, big or small these things need to be but i'm going for eight inches by one and a half inches by one and a half inches so that's what i'm going for here so i'll enter those uh so eight inches in the y direction and this is going to be 1.5 inches and uh, 1.5 inches there we go and now I need to move the camera forward otherwise I won't see it so let's go top view and grab and just bring the camera here go side view and grab and bring it down somewhere there uh, and let's go zero so I can see through the camera and I can't quite see 
I can't quite see uh, my cube. Let me uh, select it. Oh, there it is. It's over there. I'm miles away from it. So let's grab the... Uh, oops. Let's grab the camera. There we go. I'll just put it roughly there. Oh, I didn't. There we go. There we go. Uh, so uh, that's about right. That's in the right position. Let me just render and have a look. There we go. Yeah, that looks fine. So come out of there and let's start to model it. Right. Top view. And let's just uh, select it. And now very simple control. So I just want to two things go into edit mode. I want to go into ortho mode, press 5 to, for ortho mode, and press this little tab here which says uh, select, limit the selection to visible only. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to select all the way through the model. So I need to just switch that on. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, grab the end there, scale it down in the X direction like that, and free. And in fact, scaled it in all directions. Uh, I didn't stipulate X, but that's okay because I wanted to scale it down there anyway. There we go. Just straighten that top bit up, but I do want a bit of a curve here. Uh, not curve, an angle. Uh, so I want to put a couple of loop cuts here. Uh, there's one up there and another one uh, somewhere here. Now, this bit is going to be uh, flat. And then it's going to go upwards. So uh, deselect, just grab that and bring that down so it lines up. Yep, there we go. And that's a rough shape uh, that I'm after. Top view, and uh, let me just grab that and just scale X. There we go. So I'm bringing it back to the square. There we go. Uh, and that's it that's pretty much all the shaping I just want to shape this end bit to be a cube because I want to round it off a bit it doesn't have to be perfectly round but uh, let's go uh, side view and deselect let's select this scale Z zero that will line those vertices up uh, and let's look top view seven and uh, yep deselect grab this one scale X and just square that off and just look I want to want it to be roughly square yeah I think that's probably right I'll have a look uh, and uh, if it don't work out I'll alter it so um, in fact I'm, I'm gonna alter it slightly there we go <laughs> only a tiny amount but uh, I just felt I had to alter it so I'm gonna put a couple of cuts in here uh, one yeah down the center there and another one there and what I'm trying to do is create a cross uh, on that cube and uh, the reason for that is so that I can round it off so if I select those vertices there and go scale X there we go and scale Y and it just rounds it off a little bit like that now what I can do is put more loop cuts if I want to uh, I can put more loop, loop cuts there or rather just cut and uh, help to shape it a little bit more I'm trying to keep the geometry down to a minimum uh, so I'm gonna leave it like that for now I'm as I say I may alter it uh, as I go through but for now that will do now looking at this magic figure of these tries now this is 56 so that's 56 tries there um, we are working to a limit uh, now for the whole loco it's something like a uh, hundred thousand tries uh, but yeah they, they'll soon add up uh, I can assure you uh, one of the ways here um, that I'm thinking to shape this uh, in the real world we never have these hard edges so one of the things or a couple of things we can do often when we're modeling uh, we add modifiers and there's one here subdivision surface and you can see it starts to become a bit more organic I can up the uh, the subdivisions here it will make it look smoother 
and if I want to square it off all I do is I just uh, let me uh, go here I just put loop cuts in and you can see that starts to square uh, things off there and so I can bring this uh, back to its original shape but it's more organic so the edges are, are much smoother but when I look at the tries now I now have I've got the light showing right in my eyes but I think it says 1984 tries so I've increased it from 50 odd to 1000 nearly 2000 so by the time I had a few of these in the scene it's going to start to mount up so that in effect is going to be a no-no uh, so let's come out of that let's get rid of that go back to the original okay so I need to look another way another way could be another modifier I've actually got a bevel modifier and let me put that on percent and let's scale that a bit add a few more and there we go got nice uh, nice edges there to that but again I look at the tries and the tries now 2000 so it's just adding too much geometry that uh, I don't need so let me undo that oops uh, <laughs> get rid of that one let's put us back where we are so what can we do well let's have a look at trying to simplify things here uh, let me just select these uh, I've I've been using uh, I'm just going to go object mode and then come back I've been using um, 2.8 a lot at the moment uh, for another project so I forget the the buttons are completely the opposite way around to select uh, on the two I could alter them but I can't be bothered uh, so one's right click one's left click so I have to keep I keep pressing the wrong one there we go I'm going to select these edges and go X and dissolve edges there we go uh, and I can probably get rid of that one as well. Uh, so, so straight away my tries have gone from uh, 56 to 48. So I've just saved myself some tries just by doing that. So that's always handy. Now, one way, uh, the only thing uh, with the the only thing I'm really I'm not going to see this bit. That's, there's going to be a, the the sort of baker light knob there. So I'm not really going to see that that much. Um, it's just the top bit here the but I'm not going to see the bottom bit really so let's see if I can just smooth off this top bit so let's select these edges here and let's just go uh, control and B and just bring that out like that and go one two I'm just moving the mouse wheel a couple of times uh, yeah that'll do okay so now let's put a nice little edge to the top there uh, not so good here so let me go uh, to side view and all I've got to do there is uh, just uh, bring these scale these down a little bit um, so uh, let's deselect B select those and just scale Y and that will help whoops too much there there we go yep so that's okay yep so now we've got a nice little sort of chamfered edge to to it and it makes it look more natural okay so let's have a look how many tries 88 so we've, we've got a reasonable looking object that looks uh, a little bit more realistic 88 tries um, now you could if you want um, add uh, these edges as well into the mix um, and uh, in fact I'm going to do that I'm not going to add them now I'm going to go back so I'm going to go back that's it and then uh, do the lot at once it makes it easier if I try to do them separately uh, it wouldn't look so good so uh, first off let me get rid of this geometry again I went back too far 
so I'm just going to delete that geometry that's it uh, and X and dissolve edges and let's just do this again but include these side bits it it, uh, it won't add many more tries to it so here we go B and that's it and one two uh, perhaps three just for a smoother edge there we go and I'm going to go side view and same again I just want to scale these bits down just to because it, it, it sort of it's not a uniform uh, bevel in that sense same as a scale is uh, never uniform so I'm going to select these and just go scale Y and narrow those down that's it so they match uh, these and there we go so we've got nice edges on most of them and 172 that's because I increased uh, the amount uh, when I selected the the sort of bevel I increased the amount of uh, sides uh, edges to add so I could have done two but I've gone for free that's not too bad 172 tries I, I won't complain at that to get that sort of look so there we go that uh, th that is the basis of the controller uh, and now all we want uh, for this there's a, a, a sort of disc here so let's just go there and let's um, make the disc which is really just going to be a cylinder now uh, the cylinder always defaults to 32 uh, vertices uh, that that's wasteful you perhaps want to reduce that to save uh, a little bit of geometry I'm gonna go for 24 uh, there we go and uh, that's a balance between it being too steppy and uh, and being too big so th that'll probably do me about that so let's just scale it down and let's just come down here and uh, let me have a look scale in the Z direction and bring it underneath so this is attached to that uh, now it's going to be attached by a spindle or something like that but you're not going to see that so we don't model that 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 would be uh, totally wasteful um, seven mm, let's have a look mm, perhaps scale it a bit more yeah so that will do me yep yeah, that's fine and now uh, we have a uh, we have a, a sort of uh, a spigot that goes in on the end there now it it's either like a pin with a rounded end or you can get them where they're, they're like a, a, a bolt so uh, a hexagonal or whatever I'll go for the bolt look because that saves on uh, saves on geometry so uh, again we want to add a uh, cylinder and this time it wants seven sides okay and rotating the y rotate y 90 there we go and let me just top view scale this down that's it scale it down and bring it to the back and scale it down a bit more i think probably that's it scale x to bring it out somewhere like that let's just bring it down and uh, put it in the right sort of position perhaps it wants to be bigger so i'm going to scale it that's it and scale x there we go make sure this is on zero there we go and uh, yes so that's it that will do me yep fine and now it's just the uh, it's just the uh, the bakelite knob on the end there so that's going to be a uh, mesh it's going to be a uv sphere again thinking about saving the amount of tries don't want too many so i'm going to make this probably 24 the same uh, and this one let's halve it because i'm going to squash it a bit so uh, we'll make that eight so there we go and uh, seven top view 
scale down now this uh, I said you know get get a tape measure measure uh, how it's your your palm of your hands gonna sit there uh, and I would say it's probably gonna be about two and a half inches uh, which is gonna be about six and a half cents so that's what the, the sort of figure we're looking at to make it correct so scale it down uh, there we go uh, let's have a look right side view uh, squash it so scale Z and let's just uh, that's it let's come here move it in the middle there just have a look mm, perhaps uh, they vary in sizes I'm going to uh, scale it down a little bit more even though that's perhaps not quite um, not quite two and a half inches uh, that'll do me so let's go side view and now we want to uh, pull this center bit down so uh, let's just go face view deselect see and I just want to select these ones here there we go probably selected some others that I just need to get rid of that's it oops just uh, get rid of those and I think I've got one there there we go uh, oh and I need to add one there right okay so side on now I can see that's going to be too big so scale that down that's it and just go E Z Z and let's do that and uh, gonna go into object mode and just position it there we go so that uh, will do and you can put that at whatever height you want but again uh, it looks a little bit blocky so let's shade it smooth and that will uh, give us the sort of look that we're after now there we go that's uh, that's it just uh, something to say here uh, there's if you if you want to reduce the geometry even further uh, there is a modifier in blender called decimate and if I bring that up uh, it's on uh, the fact that ratio is one at the moment that means it's one for one I it's not doing anything but what uh, what you can do if you want need to save yourself uh, some geometry to so that you you're being economical with the amount of tries uh, you could add uh, a decimate modifier and if I do this you see uh, that that changes until it completely disappears but what you can do is just bring this ratio down and just look at your mesh and just go to a point where you're saying well yes that that's uh, that's not too bad that's acceptable now let's have a look that says 528 tries uh, that's um, overall um, but if I take if I take this back to one we've now got 672 so I saved myself 100 odd tries uh, by putting that that uh, decimate modifier in so that can be useful it, over the whole of the engine the logo all the bits on it if you just save a few uh, tries here and there you that's going to add up so that's a good one to use is once you, you you've uh, created your object uh, use the decimate uh, modifier uh, on it don't necessarily use it on the whole mesh as one uh, you because uh, there might be bits you don't want to reduce uh, but you can certainly reduce parts of it before you uh, do what I'm going to do next and that's combine it so uh, that's a, a, a thing to, to look at that idea of using the decimate modifier now I'm not going to use it because I don't need to use it on this one I'm, I'm at, at 672 tries for the whole thing I'm going to accept that um, and so uh, you, you know as opposed to 520 so now I want to join them all together so let me select them all and uh, I'm going to duplicate so shift 
D and if I press Control J hopefully it's joined them all together 